Hello friends, I'm Andy and you're watching Infotech channel. In this video, let me brief you on what actually changed in the interview process, especially when you go through technical part in IT interview in 2023. Let's see if it's getting harder to actually pass interview in 2023 versus pre-pandemic interviews, for example. By the way, if you missed uh, my video on how I passed AWS interview back in time, and uh, some information on uh, layoffs in uh, big tech companies uh, during pandemic, please find the link for that video in the description. So I've been following up on uh, most recent IT tech interviews. It was like for data engineers, uh, SQL um, database engineers and uh, SQL developers. And I collected some questions and possible answers uh, through conducting these interviews. It's very recent. We are in the middle of uh, 2023. Actually, this is uh, August of 2023. And I will show you in comparison uh, what questions are asked right now versus what it was multiple years back in time. So back in 2016, when I took my first IT interview and I got my first IT job with uh, Amazon Web Services, it was a cloud engineer position. The questions were quite simple. Even back at that time, it was not really tough. So one of the questions I was asked uh, was, how do you install SQL Server on a Windows, right? And even if you're not very proficient and you just, uh, you know, complete some kind of courses on uh, uh, SQL Server as a database engineer, you should know that uh, you get a media, right? Uh, from that media, you when you install, you open a installation wizard and it lets you pick components of SQL Server you want to install. And basically, it depends on whether you want to create production environment or non-prod, something like dev or test, right? Based on that, you pick particular features from uh, available list uh, or drop-down menu in SQL Server. And then you deal with uh, files and file system and you... Um, allocate, uh, you choose allocation for your data file and then for log file or log files on different hard drives and CDs, right, uh, available in your system and so on. So it's not like super hard, right? If you know basics, you would be able to answer this kind of question. Another question was about the load balancer, which was kind of advanced for 2016, but uh, still um, the example was plain. It's just two applications and load balancer between them and basics, how you understand the way it works. So basically, if application one goes down, load balancer should be able to redirect you to application two, right? And you would still be able to write uh, data or pull uh, data out of the database. Another question I was asked was about the uh, log shipping, one of the high availability solutions. Um, so they can ask you about mirroring or log shipping. Uh, or any other that you're familiar with, by the way. So you're not supposed to know everything, right? But I claimed that I knew log shipping, right? So the question was, uh, when you run log shipping, uh, are you gonna run copy command on the source server or on the target, right? So there are multiple steps and copy is step number two and like, to answer it properly, you say uh, copy command is happening on the target. But I'm not gonna give you full big answers to each and every questions here. Uh, you can Google it and uh, prepare yourself for, for the future interviews. But I've got to tell you that nowadays interviews are on a different level. So these plain questions that I just explained that were kind of relevant for 2016 are not gonna be enough right now. Interviews have gotten way more tough. It's more advanced. You've got to understand and know way more than let's say six or seven years ago. Now contemporary interview questions. From what I've been conducting, it was again for SQL data engineer and uh, SQL developer position, which is kind of similar to what I've been going through back in 2016. But now in 2023, questions are like this. When you create an ETL job and you're using SSIS, integration services, or reporting services, how do you create a dynamic data source? 
Again, I'm not gonna give you all the answers because it will make the, the video too long. Uh, you can Google the question, right, and find your answer on YouTube and Google anywhere, uh, your preference. But uh, what I want you to understand is that it becoming tougher and tougher. The questions are getting more advanced. So now it's no longer tell me your experience with ETL or do you know what SSRS is in SQL Server? It's more advanced. Now creating multiple data sets or using multiple data sources uh, for your ETL jobs and how you actually create this dynamic data source. So you've got to have a pretty good and big answer for the uh, feature for this tool uh, when you use uh, ETL operations. And another question on uh, reporting services. The question is like that. When your report contains multiple data sets, maybe multiple data sources, how SSRS is handling it? In which order it proceeds to work with these data sets or multiple sources? Again, Google the answer, try to, to put it on paper, try to understand architecture, right? And where it goes first and where it goes second and so on. To make a long story short, uh, uh, technically it, it's based on, um, on report parameters, right? Which you can preset. Question number three, what are cascading parameters? Cascading parameters in ETL, extract, transform and load jobs. Again, to make long story short, it's when values that are populated in one parameter will depend on values in another parameter. And if in one parameter values change, it will create and trigger the change of the uh, values in the first parameter that's coming before or after it. Question number four, how do you configure SQL agent? So SQL agent or SQL agent is responsible for running automation jobs, right? So whenever you create a store procedure and you want to run it on schedule, there will be a specific SQL agent that basically runs these jobs and you put it on a calendar, right? On schedule, like a daily or weekly at a specific time and so on. But then you need this SQL agent that basically runs the job and determines uh, and it kind of warns you if if the job fails right because not necessarily all the jobs will be will succeed 100 percent, right so if it's a failed job you're supposed to receive a not notification some kind maybe via email for example it's all preset in that window with uh, when you configure sql agent and most importantly um, your sql agent might not have um, a permission to access certain files or even databases. So whenever you configure it, you make sure that you grant permissions to a specific agent or account. And one more um, example of a question in 2023 for IT related jobs for like data engineering uh, is how to simplify complex SQL query by hiding underlying complexity. Of that query or statement again google these questions or google most common questions and and see if this article is relevant if it's created in 2023 so you would uh, understand you are up to date all right so next year my questions are going to be obsolete maybe right in six months they're going to be maybe old right so whenever you are preparing for it interview technical inter interview, make sure you Google uh, most relevant, most uh, common questions uh, that are persistent to your year and month. Now you can see that the uh, questions are a lot more complex, more advanced. So you've got to prepare more, you've got to be sharper. Why tech IT interviews are becoming more and more complex? Well, a couple of reasons. First, as you can see from my previous videos, big tech companies laid off tons of workers, thousands, like dozens of thousands of people. Uh, and I mean big tech like Microsoft, Amazon Web Services, and so on, Google. So these companies, right? Uh, only AWS, more than 70,000 
uh, employees were laid off in 2022, 2023. So it's like an army of people. So now all these engineers are hunting for another job. And uh, if you are on the job market, you will be directly competing with these people who's got a pretty solid uh, background and good experience, right? Years of experience. Um, so that is why it's becoming tougher. So companies picked up on that vibe and uh, they realized that competition is stronger right more and more people actually apply for the same position and they are trying to create a tougher uh frames for you to go through the interview like uh, more layers of interview uh, more advanced questions to filter out weaker candidates another reason why it interviews are becoming tougher is that uh, a big number of uh, it related courses uh, created all over the United States and not only in the States, in any country right now, because IT profession is popular um, since you can get a job uh, that is 100% remote. So you work from home or you, you work you work from any place in the world, right? And um, benefits and, and uh, compensation is pretty good compared to other jobs. So that's why competition is getting tougher. Thousands of people who uh, graduated from uh, basic IT courses, uh, hunting for jobs now. Uh, it's going to be uh, slightly easier to compete against these people in the interview, uh, especially the technical part, um, because um, someone who just uh, finished IT related course, they don't have real experience. So uh, companies create tougher questions specifically to filter out people who are coming from IT related courses. They want someone who's got real experience in the field, who's been working for a real IT company in the past. Now the main verdict, if you are on IT job market right now in 2023 and four and five and so on, do not rely on your present knowledge. If you had uh, experience five years back, right? or you passed interview five, seven years ago, I strongly suggest do not rely on your uh, information and on your knowledge uh, at that point. Research what's new. Pick most relevant and fresher uh, in time uh, questions and answers. So uh, make sure you understand what's in demand right now at this point in time. Be up to date with technology, with questions and answers. And remember, it's not important to know how to do your job as a data engineer. It's important to know how to pass IT related interview. That is way bigger. You will learn the job when you are in the field while getting paid. First, you simply need to be the competition, which is becoming stronger and tougher by the month. With all this knowledge, I wish you a success in your journey. Be strong, my friends. And until next video, bye.